Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm Chris Barnes, Professor of Business Management here at Lakeland Community College, and I'd like to welcome you uh, and thank you for coming to the Dworkin and Bernstein Management Lecture Series at Lakeland Community College. This series is brought to you through an endowment of the Dworkin and Bernstein Law Firm. Our speaker tonight is Dr. Jody Berg, President and CEO of Vitamix. Yes, the Vitamix you see on TV, the Vitamix that everyone covets and wants in their home, the blender that we must all have. And you'll, you'll, as you watch her presentation, you're going to want to go out and get a, get a Vitamix. Vitamix is a 96-year young company, as they say. It's family-owned. It's a mid-market manufacturer of high-performance blending equipment for the consumer and for food service markets. Dr. Berg is a fourth-generation president and chief executive officer of Vitamix and has been in that position since 2011. She joined Vitamix in 1997 after starting her career with the Marriott Incorporated Company in the hospitality industry. She was named Executive Vice President in 2007, President in 2009, and CEO in 2011. Under her leadership, Vitamix products are now available in more than 140 countries around the world. She established Vitamix as the world leader in high performance blending and led the company to organic growth of more than 400%. Dr. Berg received a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Bowling Green State University, a Master of Business Administration from Washington State University, and she just completed her PhD in Management last year at Case Western Reserve University's Weatherhead School of Management. Please help me welcome Dr. Jody Berg, President and CEO of Vitamix. So good evening, everyone. So how many of you know about Vitamix? Yeah, quite a few people. How many of you have a Vitamix? So any of you that don't, talk to somebody, raise their hand later, because I'm not going to talk about our machine today, um, but they could probably tell you stories. So I am going to talk a little bit about our journey. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing like listening to somebody introduce you to realize how many twists and turns your life has taken. And when I was younger, I swore I would never be involved with the family business. And it wasn't until I came back and got involved in it, and I realized that, no, I'm going to be in sales and marketing, or then I was going to be in quality. And eventually, I ended up having the opportunity to run the company. So life truly, truly is a journey. And the story I want to talk about today is also about a journey. And it's our journey about how to create the wow. So some of this you already know. We were started in 1921. That's my great-grandfather. And he was relatively innovative at the time because he brought a can opener to the market. And we think, what? A can opener? What's exciting about that? Well, canned goods had just come to the US market. They were in the military, but they hadn't been to the consumer market. And they were this opportunity for people to have whole food produce throughout the entire year. But they didn't really have a way of opening their cans except using a knife. So he brought one of the first can openers to the market where the blade was actually covered and your kids could open your cans. So that was in 1921. The company continued to grow through the Great Depression. And then they, he got into other tools and gadgets that would allow you to eat differently and healthy in your home. So we've always kind of been about whole food health. We had a whole food health store in downtown Cleveland for several years. The company was formed in, in Illinois, but in 1937, after being here for the Great Lakes Exposition, imagine Cleveland had over 900 resi 900,000 residents at the time. We're almost half the size that we were back in 1937. But they decided that Cleveland was, had so many amazing people, and they're such hardworking, dedicated people, that they packed up their company, moved it to Cleveland, opened the health food store downtown, eventually moved into Olmstead Falls Township, I don't know if anyone gets way over there into Olmstead Falls, and we've been there ever since. So our products are shipped, as mentioned, into 140 different countries around the world, and we make 100% of them right here in Northeast Ohio. So what I really want to talk about today is that journey of the wow, and this is a little bit of who we are today. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a demonstration of one of the most wonderful machines that was ever invented, the Vitamix machine, and I'm going to talk to you on the most vital subject that concerns you and your family, and that is health. If you could hear that last line, but that was my great grandfather from the first infomercial saying that when we have health, we have wealth. We are the richest, richest person, richest people on, in the world. That was his statement back from 1949. So the old clip that you saw was actually my great grandfather. So I have the pleasure of having him on video. In 1949, he decided this newfangled thing called a television set. Why don't he? Why don't I take my demonstration and put it on the TV? Actually, the conversation went a little different. It was my grandfather that tried to convince him that he should take his demonstration and put it on TV. And my great-grandfather said, why would I do that? This television is gonna just break down the fibers of the family, and it really has no long-term place in our society. He really didn't believe television was gonna stick. How wrong was he, right? So my grandfather convinced him that he should do uh, his infomercial, or he should do his demonstration on TV. It wasn't called an infomercial at that time, because it was the very first one ever done. And so for half an hour, Papa Barnard did live, actually twice, he did it live. He went downtown Cleveland on Saturday night, did his demonstration. It aired in cities all over the US, New York City included. So I kind of think we started Saturday Night Live, but we don't get credit for that. But it, then he did film it, and so we have this in our archives. And the first infomercial that they did my grandfather used to tell stories about the fact that he was sitting on the edge of his bed till two o'clock in the morning, writing orders on any scrap of paper he could possibly find, until finally the operator, because we had the operators at the time that were connecting all the calls, right? We've seen pictures and we've seen them in movies. And she got on the line and she said, Mr. Barnard, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna go home. You're not gonna get any more calls tonight. And so that shut down the orders for the night with the infomercial, but it was incredibly successful. They sold over 400 machines in one night, which back then, that was more than we would had sold in an entire year. So the infomercial truly put us on the map. And it was, the reason I share this story is because it's a way of being innovative and thinking outside the box of doing something that other people hadn't done before. Now, how do you sell one product by reaching through uh, everyone on television, such as he did. And so he had the, the nerve, I should say, to, to try something like that. So where the journey that we're on now is this journey of the word wow. The word wow is fascinating to me. If you think about that word, every single one of us in this room has said wow at one point in our life, if not more, right? And when is that moment when you say wow? It's when something has happened where you can't contain yourself and you just have to say wow. I've traveled in countries all over the world, multiple different languages. Most countries, when I ask them, what's that word that you use when you're so excited you can't contain yourself and you just you have to say it, what do you say? And they say, you mean wow? I'm like, yeah, it's the same word, it's the same word. So I think it's kind of like a sneeze. If you have to say wow, try to stop yourself. It's really difficult. So I thought about this word wow for a little bit and I thought, you know what? If this wow is something that people can't stop themselves from doing, and it gives you a really good feeling to say wow, why don't we figure out how to create the wow purposefully? 
Why don't we as a company decide that we're gonna go out and we're gonna see how many wows we can create? Because another phenomenal thing that happens with the wow is if something causes you to say wow, and then something else happens and you get a second wow, and then a third wow, those wows build up in you, and at some point you are so full of wow, what do you wanna do? You wanna tell someone, right? You wanna tell everybody. Think about that person that you met, that you fall in love with, wow, they're amazing. I wanna tell everybody. Talk about that, that new car that you bought, wow, it's amazing, I love how it drives. The new movie that you saw, right? Those wows build up and you just wanna tell everyone. So, in order for us, as a, we are a family-owned company, and our purpose is to liberate and nourish the zest for life. It also means, how do we make the world a healthier place? We are out there to try to change the way the world thinks about food. We're not just gonna be a company so we can make money. So I don't need just a bunch of employees. I literally need an army around the world who's gonna help me change the world. Because I know I can't do it on my own, and I know I can't do it with just a couple thousand employees in Northeast Ohio, right? I mean, we have to have a movement that goes out across the entire world. And I thought, okay, how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna do this using the wow. So that's where the wow comes in. Well, how does that wow actually look like when it's in play? So anyone know Nathan Fillion? There's a movie out there, Castle. He's been in some other things, okay? This is a video clip of him on one of the late night programs talking about Vitamix. This is what happens when somebody is really, really full of wow. Friends of mine invited me over. They got this brand new blender, this Vitamix 5200. It just, I have one of those. You have it? Yeah. So you know, it doesn't matter what you put in there. Yeah. It's liquid. Yeah, you, you could put in frozen everything, liquid. It's amazing. And they had it all set up with all these little uh, little, little uh, cooking, the, they put all the ingredients. When you just watch a cooking show, everything's all set out. Yeah, you right. can go digging in the closet. We're just putting in some of this and some of this. It's all set up. So this, these friends of mine were making shakes. It was to die for. It just look, this, she's scooping in the bits, and I said, I'm doing, as soon as I get home, Amazon, Vitamix, I get the dishes, I get the little scoop, I'm have, I invite all my friends over, <laughs> I have the recipe, see, these are nutrients are good for this, these frozen bits are good for that, I'm scooping stuff in, it looks like an infomercial for the, for the vitamin. He had a wow moment. Here's some more wow moments. This is a story that a gal sent us. So we set out to celebrate our 90th anniversary by asking our customers, just, can you just, what would you like to tell us? What would you like to say to Vitamix? So we reached out to a lot of customers. Hundreds of thousands of different stories came in. We put a lot of them in a book. And what the common theme between all of these stories was gratitude. They just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Vitamix. Thank you for the product. Thank you for the company that you are. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for taking care of us. We ended up calling the book our gratitude book. But here was just one of the stories of this girl in the middle. And the other part of the story is that she never used to eat a, a fruit or vegetable. She just wouldn't do it. So she went to a Vitamix demonstration and they served her something with cabbage in it and she wanted more, and her mom said, sweetheart, that's got cabbage in it. She goes, mom, it's delicious. So now she's the biggest advocate of greens, and she's trying to get everybody to drink their green smoothies. This wow moment, the, the quote doesn't go exactly with the photo, but I wanna talk about both. As you read the quote, it's about sometimes people, it's like, I'm gonna rescue anything out of my house, I'm gonna run in and get my Vitamix, right? But this photo was in a newspaper where it, a tornado hit, the entire house was pretty much destroyed. Sitting on the counter was their Vitamix machine. We can't really take credit for that, but hey, it works. Wow. <laughs> and then you have chefs all over the world where chefs have deemed the Vitamix more significant than knives, and chefs have always thought knives were like their most coveted thing. I went to a, a restaurant in New York City, and uh, the, the chef, the pastry chef, I was asking him how he used his Vitamix machine. Well, he takes it out and he sets it on the counter. As he's talking to me, he takes his cloth and he's polishing it. He didn't even realize he was doing it. He's polishing his Vitamix. And he says, and you know what? I keep it locked up in there. Because <laughs> I don't want anyone to do anything to my Vitamix machine. So we've been successful, we're creating the wow and they're helping us create the well other places. This is a few things that are happening in social media online. 26 signs you're a Vitamix owner. On business trips, you miss your Vitamix more than your significant other. We didn't write this stuff. These are our customers that are helping us create an army to help change the world, right? 
Here's another one, 10 reasons Vitamix can change your life. And all the way down to it, because of the, the freedom it gives you, and of course, family time, bringing the family together. These are some of the movies and television placements that the Vitamix has been in. Now, I will say that we do have somebody that goes out and reminds people that the Vitamix is available for placement, but we often get calls of people that say, we really need, can we put the Vitamix in our scene? In our, and we had, uh, anyone know, is it Gracie and Frankie or Grace and Frankie? They actually named an episode the Vitamix. So it's, it was all kind of centered around the, the fact that they got a gift, as a, Vitamix as a gift. So kind of the Vitamix is like, once you become familiar and you kind of think what car you want, when you're driving around, you see that car everywhere. Has anyone seen that happen to you? Well, it's very similar. Once somebody starts thinking about, I think I want a Vitamix, Vitamix is absolutely everywhere. I was just staying at a hotel in Vancouver, Canada, and when I was checking out, I gave her my email address, and it was jberg at vitamix.com. She goes, Vitamix? I said, yeah, Vitamix, v i and I know how to spell it, she says. She goes, I want one of those machines so bad. So even up in Vancouver, Canada. So this is a, and you're not gonna be able to read the numbers and that's okay, I just want you to look at the line and how significantly bigger it is than the other lines. This is our share of voice. So in public relations, you measure something that says, how often are people talking about your product? And they'll, you get certain points if it's in the title, you get certain points for the number of times it's mentioned in the body of the article, you get certain points for uh, whether no other competitors and things are, are in there, so they, there's certain ways that they measure it, but this is one thing that we as an organization look at to say, are people talking about us? Is the wow working? Well, the wow is working, and so we measure this on a regular basis to say, are we getting people to talk about us? And then here's some awards that we've won, and it's not so much that there, you can see all of them, but there's just, there's a lot of them, and it's really kind of neat to know that it's being recognized. We were just in Germany introducing a new product at a show about a month ago, and we won three design awards in Germany. I was pretty happy with that, right? This is Germany. So we know that the WOW is working. We know that it's out there. So I want to talk for a little bit is how do you create the wow? And this is something that can apply to your businesses that you're going to start. I understand some of you are, are wanting to be entrepreneurs, right? So creating the wow is something that you can do. You can also create the wow in your own life and how you decide to function as a person and interact with people, right? If you want, you can get that opportunity to say, what is it that will create the wow in other people? And that's your goal. That's what you're shooting for. That's what you want to strive for. The next is is how do you create the journey to make sure that you're going to get to the wow? So what's the opposite of wow? Yeah, you notice there's like 15 different sounds we just heard. There isn't really one thing for the opposite of wow, but it sounds a little bit like eh, uh, uh, eh, eh. All sorts of like unpleasant sounds, right? The same thing happens with the opposite of wow. That is you get so deflated that at some point you are so completely deflated you want to do the same thing. You want to talk about it, right? And this time you're just going to say everything about this company or this person or whoever it is that brought you down, whoever it is that created you to feel that way. You want to get it out and throw it up on somebody else, right? That's the opposite of the wow. They also balance each other out. So if you're creating wow, but then you got something in your system that's creating the eh? it's going to keep the wow from inflating as quickly to the point where people want to talk. Does that make sense? Simple math. You want to create as much of that wow, and you want to eliminate as much of the unpleasant experiences as possible. When you have more than one person working for you, so when your organization gets to be the size of two, you now have to make sure that the other employees in your organization understand how to create the wow and what that wow is the same way you do, right? Because you can't guarantee the other person's going to do it, so you want to make sure you, help, you have a formula as far as how people can create the wow. So this is how we go about purposefully creating the wow. It's not by chance. So I got so excited about understanding this concept of purpose that I decided to go back to school and study it. And this is what I discovered when I studied it. That is that if somebody has a personal purpose, if you look at this first chart, if you have a personal purpose, this is engagement. Those of us that have a purpose in life, we are more than twice as engaged as if we were working for an organization that had a company higher purpose. 
Oftentimes, when we're in school, we think, oh, you know what? I want to go work for a company that wants to make a difference. I want to go work for a company who's really going to try to do something in the world, right? Yes, do that. I highly recommend it. That will cause you to be more engaged than if you're working for a company that doesn't have a higher purpose, maybe a company that's just working for the bottom line. But you can be even more engaged. You can have also, this one's a commitment to your organization, but look at this one, life satisfaction. Knowing what your purpose is in life, even if you change it later, but having a purpose gives you an incredible sense of life satisfaction and working for an organization that has a higher purpose doesn't impact your life satisfaction at all. Think about it. So it's not really about the company you're going to go join. It's about who you are and who you want to be and the difference that you want to make in the world. And if you can figure that out, then you can work for just about any company and still have life satisfaction. But if you work for a company that also has a higher purpose, your satisfaction, your, your engagement, your commitment go up even higher. So part of this journey isn't just about the company, it's also about the individuals within the company. So I had to figure out a way of how do I help people within my organization realize what their personal purpose is and then create an environment or a culture where they could actually make their personal purpose happen, right? So this is how we do it. We, I already mentioned our company purpose is to liberate and nourish the zest for life. So it's interesting, these words were per picked very purposely. The word liberate is to unleash and to unshackle. So we wanna unleash and unshackle people's zest for life. Zest is flavor and um, it's spice and it's the things about life that you enjoy, right? And then we also wanna nourish that zest for life. That's our purpose. So when we're interviewing people, I'm trying to find out do they have a purpose that's similar to that? Is there something in their life that either they want to liberate the zest for life, they want to nourish the zest for life, or do they want to do another purpose that will help us as an organization liberate and nourish the zest for life? So it's this alignment around a personal purpose and a company purpose. The other thing we have is, is five values. And the five values for our particular company are these five. But you could, another company may have five different values. The power of value alignment is so not yet understood. But this was our experience. The reason that I wanted to find out what our five values were is because we were a company that was significantly smaller than we are today. And I knew that we could become a brand that was global. And in some cases, people will like to think of us as iconic. I knew we had the potential to do that. But I also knew in order for us to do that, we had to grow very fast and we had to bring on a whole bunch of people. And I've worked in companies before this with people who had all different sorts of values and it was very complicated. I decided, let's figure out what we value as an organization. So we went out and, and had the employees tell us, what do you value about this company? What is it that you don't want us to change? And it meant that most, companies, most employees in the company at the time said, I value the fact that this is a family company. I value the fact that I get to care about people. I feel like I belong. And I get to be respected, and I get to respect others. I care about listening, learning, and, and creating that wow within our customers. These were the five values that, they, that the employees selected. At the end of the day, the management didn't select them, HR didn't select them, the marketing department didn't select them, the employees did. What I did is I said, now that you've told me those are the five things you care about more than anything, I will not change them. What I didn't say is I will most likely be changing everything else. And I did. We changed the buildings that they reported to, the people they reported to, the departments that they were in, what their office looked like, what their chair looked like, where they parked. Every process within the organization had to change as we just completely exploded and transformed the organization. But I didn't change these five things. And when any employee was feeling angst about going through this change, and what do I do? I have to drive to a different building. You're changing this, you're changing that. I said, what do you care about more than anything in the world? My family, I haven't changed that. <clears throat> Being able to do the right thing, even though it costs more, I haven't changed that. The things that you care about are your lifeline. I was creating a lifeline for the employees. So as we went through change, they had something to hang on to. Now, that's a great story, and you hear about how it happened in an organization. When you're going into life, 
Figure out your lifeline. Figure out what you value more than anything else. What do you truly, truly need to hang on to? And allow your life to evolve and change around that. Just don't let that change. The reason we feel lost when we go through change is because we don't know what to hang on to. Like we don't have a foundation. We don't feel like we're rooted in something. Figure out what that is for you. And it's not gonna be the same thing necessarily as the person sitting next to you. That's okay. These are your values. These are the things that matter most to you. What I didn't anticipate about these values was that, and I realized later, when you are with people that have the value the same thing that you value, you feel safe. Think about this for a second. Your best friends, and oftentimes family members, but no guarantee, you feel the closest to them. You feel like you can let your hair down, you can be yourself, you can have the bad jokes, you can laugh inappropriately, you can eat the things you don't think you're supposed to eat in front of anyone else, right? I mean, we feel safe. The reason we feel safe is because that person values the same thing that we value, meaning we don't have to spend all of our time and energy trying to make somebody else happy. But if you go to work for a company that values different things than you value, then you're gonna find yourself constantly trying to make your boss happy or the person working next to you happy because they're looking at life differently than you are. And all that energy that you're using making somebody else happy means you're not using all that energy making your purpose, what's important to you, happen. So if you're finding this disconnect with where you work or with the people that you're with, it could possibly be that you don't value the same things. So by sharing these values and by hiring everybody that we've hired since we articulated them with these values, we have an entire workforce of people that can feel really, really comfortable. Like after they've been at the organization, they say, I just feel like I've come home. I feel like this, these are my peeps, right? I can relate to these people. And it's because we share the same values. So family being one of the top ones. It's not uncommon if you're at Vitamix and your son or your daughter or your spouse has something really significant going on. All you have to say is, you know, my daughter, my daughter has a, and three people are gonna say, what are you doing here, go. I got it covered. You got a meeting, I'll go to your meeting for you. You got a project, I'll get your project done for you. Let's figure it out, you go, be with your family. We'll take care of what you got going on because I know that as soon as something happens in my family, I'm gonna be able to go and be with my family and somebody else will take care of me. It's the environment that we created. And now you don't have to worry about, what, what am I gonna do? I really wanna to go to my daughter's softball game, but I just know if I tell my boss, they're gonna be upset, they're gonna make me work late, they're gonna make me feel guilty, right? Figure out what you value, and then go find an organization that values the same things. And as you saw from, or heard, I should say, from my career choices over the years, you can change what you do. I started mechanical engineering, I graduated with uh, hospitality management, I got into quality, and now I'm running a company, right? So you can change what you do, but you'll be happy if you're kind of aligned on that value piece. And I think I have to move along a little bit faster. So how do I align the organization on what we're doing strategically? So we have something called a strategic cascade, and I create a, well, I, I don't create it, all of our, our leadership team comes together and we create a corporate strategy. And that corporate strategy is gonna answer questions like how do we win? What do we need to do to win? That's gonna be defined. And then each division will create their cascade so it lines up with my corporate cascade. And then every department within that division is gonna create their cascade and that will line up with the divisional one which lines up with the corporate one. And wait, there's more. Then we go all the way down to the employees and every employee in the company will have goals and each one of those goals lines up with the department's cascade, lining up with the division, lining up with their corporate cascade. So by the end of March, I have everyone in the company working on things individually that will help move our strategic objectives going in the right direction. Like they're all moving towards the same end goal. I don't have to be running around, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that, why don't you do this? What are you doing? Why don't you do this? No, we've already got it, so everyone is already moving ahead in the same direction. And then we measure it, and we measure it, and we measure it. <laughs> and we measure it, and we post it and say, how are we doing on this goal? How are we doing on that goal? Are we on the right direction? Do we need to change something? Let's get together, let's realign, and we can push forward again. 
So I want to talk a little bit about the customer journey, because really at the end of the day, this is my army, right? The customers all over the world, this is the army I'm trying to create. I have to ignite them. Actually, you're probably wondering why I'm carrying this. I forgot to tell you. So what this is, is these are our values and our, our purpose and all the alignment stuff that I was telling you about. All of us as employees, we carry it with us. We have it on our name badge. So we can be reminded of who we are and why we're here. And I also use the information that's on this card, our purpose statement, our mission statement, our values. I use it as not just a compass to tell us where we're going, but also as a management tool, an alignment tool. When I'm making decisions on behalf of the organization, I know that all of my employees in the company, what's on these cards matters to them. So if I make decisions that are lined up with what's on this card, then I'm making decisions as if every single employee in the company was sitting in my office at the time I made that decision. Their voice is in the room. They're represented. I know what's important to them. I will make decisions that they will like and they will appreciate and they will respect. And then I give this to all the employees and I say, you're going to make thousands of decisions that affect me, that affect this company. If you make your decisions through the lens of what's in this card, then it's as if I'm in the room and my voice is sitting there when you make that decision. So our, our decisions can be aligned, right? So what does this mean to our customers? So I was talking about a journey, a, a journey of your own, could be your own journey, it could be your company that you're starting, that journey, it could be uh, the journey of the company that you're working for currently. But it's really understanding where you want to go. Our ultimate destination is to get people to share the wow. Our goal is to get people so impassioned and excited about their Vitamix and about us as a brand that they want to tell everybody else. That's the, the destination for our journey. But you notice it's a circle because as soon as they're telling everybody else, then we're going back to the beginning. And the very, person, the very start of this journey is I hear from somebody I know about the Vitamix. That's the most powerful way you can hear about a product is if somebody that you know tells you, right? When your friends or family recommend something, hmm, you pay attention. So that's the start of the journey is when they hear somebody talking about the Vitamix. And then people go out and conduct their own research and we'll make sure that wherever you're conducting that research, whether you're going to go to a Vitamix demonstration, whether you're going to go to the Vitamix website, whether you're going to go to another retailer's website and you're going to look up the Vitamix product and you're going to look about customer testimonials, right? However you're going to understand and do your research about the Vitamix, we want to make that a wow moment. We want to figure out how to make you go, wow, I had no idea that you could clean your Vitamix in 20 seconds and you don't have to take out the blades. It's the easiest appliance in the world because when you think about it, put a drop of soap in, some hot water, turn that puppy on, it's the, bit, the fastest dishwasher you own. It cleans itself. Wow, I want to make sure that story gets told. I want to make sure that every demonstrator, we have demonstrators all over the US, Canada, the UK, multiple countries around the world that are demonstrating the Vitamix product. I want to make sure that the people that we hire to be demonstrators are people that have their own personal Vitamix story that they can tell. So when they're standing up there and they're talking to customers, they're not trying to sell a product. They're trying to help the customer, the person that's in front of them, know how to successfully travel on their own journey towards health because me as a demonstrator, I've already done it and I'll tell you my story. Right? I want to make sure every single touch point that that customer comes in contact with their brand creates a wow. And that they really understand the, the value proposition of what the customer or what the Vitamix can do. And then when you're going to get your Vitamix, you're going to buy it, you're going to receive it, you're trying it at home. I want to make sure that experience, the first experience you have with the Vitamix is out of this world, fantastic, and everything you try in it afterwards is also equally good. So building that confidence in using it. We actually, on our production line, all of our units are made here in Northeast Ohio, we have a wow station. And in that wow station, it's the very last station before they close up the box. And they, they put it on a scale to make sure that it, the weight of the entire box is right. If there's a piece of paper missing, we know it, right? So we, we weigh it, and then they look at it, and they take it out to make sure that this is perfect. And then they sprinkle some wow powder in there, Close it up, ship it on its way. 
<laughs> but the last thing is becoming a better me, helping Vitamix, or Vitamix helping our customers realize that they truly can be successful on their journey. This is interacting with customers through social media, through customer service. All of our customer service reps are right here in Northeast Ohio. I guess that's not true. In Germany, we have some that handle some of the German calls in different places around the world. But we don't outsource it. And all of our customer service people own a Vitamix machine, have owned a Vitamix machine for years. So when you call and you ask the question, they're not flipping through a book trying to read a script. They're talking from real life experience. Yes, I've ground up my tamper too. I totally relate to what you're saying. No problem, right? So that experience, that personal experience of having worked with a machine and using it for years and what recipes that they've actually done. So making that personal connection with people. So this is the journey, the Vitamix customer journey. I just encourage you to figure out what, is, what journey are you on? What's your destination? What's your purpose? Why are you on this journey in the first place, right? Figure that out if you haven't figured it out yet. Wherever you are in life, figure out your purpose and then map it out and figure out where are the wow moments in that journey that are gonna have the biggest impact. And those are the ones you wanna focus on. Those are the ones that you really wanna pay attention to. And when you figure out what you value most, what's really important to you, what your purpose is, don't compromise on it. Figure out what it is and build your life around it because you're only gonna live once. And every day that you don't go through life purposely creating the wow for yourself or others is one day that you might be stuck with a whole lot of eh instead of the wow. So don't leave the wow to chance. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and share a little bit of our Vitamix story. I think we have some time for questions. Saturday Night Live doesn't ask, they just do. And then uh, you, you're lucky to find out later, right? So uh, I started getting the calls actually Sunday morning that that, that, that had aired. Um, it's actually, and the other thing about Saturday Night Live is there's, they're just people really doing skits, so they, they want it to be funny. But it's, you know you've, you've gotten there when Saturday Night Live is gonna spoof you. Right? So it was a spoof on Vitamix. It was, it was actually the spoof on how expensive it is because one person wanted, she had her Vitamix machine, and she says, well, obviously you can't afford this one, but I have it, and she's going on and on about her Vitamix machine. So it doesn't, it, it plays off of the fact that, yeah, the Vitamix machine is gonna be more expensive than any other blender out there, but it's also gonna last. We have Vitamix machines that people have had for over 50 years. I had uh, one gentleman, we were having a sale at the headquarters, I think it was a, like a, a, a reconditioned machine sale, or Mother's Day sale, that was Mother's Day sale. And this, I'm walking around and this gentleman was standing in line and he looked like he was having a grumpy day. So I decided to ask, how are you? And he says, I'm terrible. I'm like, oh, I said, well, what, what can I do? Why are you so terrible? What happened? He says, you don't understand. I have had my Vitamix for 50 years. I've had my Vitamix longer than I've been married twice. I've had my Vitamix longer than I've had my homes, my cars, my kids, my pets. That has been on my kitchen counter for 50 years. And it finally broke. And you guys don't have the part to fix it. And I have to buy a new one. I don't mind buying a new one, but I'm gonna miss mine. And I'm, I'm, I'm going through mourning. You still trade that in for a new one? <laughs> well, we do have trade-in. And this is why we have our trade-in program, because People will trade in Vitamix machines. If you ever get a, fine, a Vitamix machine out there and it's like under $100, buy it, and then turn around and trade it in because you get $100 off, I think it's $100 off, towards your new machines, right? But one of the reasons we have that program is because people like him, and unfortunately that particular part that he needed we didn't have, but if somebody calls up and they said, I've had my machine 30, 40, 50 years, however long they've had it, and I desperately don't want to replace it, we will ask them, do you mind if we go through and see if we can find the part you need from a, from a machine that somebody's returned? And if they're okay with that, then we go through and scavenge the, the stuff that we have to find a part so that they can have their same exact Vitamix machine back on their counter because it means that much to them. Yeah.
Well, um, the, the difference is the, there's a couple of blenders that want to say that they're high performance blenders, yeah. but they don't actually do what the Vitamix does and they don't last as long as what the Vitamix lasts. Um, and most of these companies are out there because they really want to make money. So we, um, we make money, we make enough profit in order to reinvest, in order to grow, uh, so we're kind of at it for different reasons. But yeah, there's a, there's a couple of, their, of competitors it's out there. analogous to the Browns and the Steelers, right? <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. So um, those of you that are studying business, this will be an interesting case for you. Um, I mentioned there's all sorts of stories I can tell, so this will be an interesting one to share. So m most markets will normalize themselves. And what a normal market means is you have a low end, you have a medium category, and then you have a high end, right? So we were a direct response company, meaning we sold only direct for decades. And the, way, the reason that we did that is because the blender category was all low end. It was, you were really hard pressed to find a blender that was selling for more than $100 up until probably the early, sometime in the 1990s. They were all under $100. And then you had the Vitamix, which was selling for $299, $399, depending on what our price point was. <clears throat> at the time. So we sold direct because we had to tell people the entire story about why they would want to eat healthy, how you could eat healthy if you blended your food, how you could eat more of it, why you would want a Vitamix to do that, and here now let's close the sale, right? So we had this very long message we had to, to tell, and you can't do that when you're in retail. So in 2004, when I got into the household division, they asked me to, to head it up, I started to do my market research and I realized that there was a shift in the wind, meaning all of a sudden, people, they weren't talking about the Atkins diet, and they weren't talking about the South Beach diet, and I listened really close, I'm like, they're talking about Whole Foods. They're talking about Whole Foods. Well, it helps that there's a store named Whole Foods, okay? But the terminology was coming out there. They're talking about organic, they're talking about real, they're talking about fresh. They're using all the language that we've been using for decades to talk about the kind of food that you want. They also started talking about why the actual food that they ate was important to how they felt. Prior to that, when I would ask people why they ate vegan, vegetarian, or some really strict lifestyle diet, people would say it's because of the animals. It, it, it's, it's cruelty to the animals, so therefore I'm gonna eat this way because I wanna save the animals. But right about 2004, people changed their answers and they started to say it's because I feel better. What I eat affects how I feel, and therefore I'm gonna eat differently. So all these stars started aligning. But I knew that the market, there was, it was completely dysfunctional as a total market because nobody really knew that we were out there because we were selling direct. But if I wanted people to do their research about Whole Foods and I wanted to blow open the door so people could think differently about preparing food, I knew that we could no longer continue to be a direct market company. We had to be a market, a company that was mainstream. We had to get into retail. So as soon as we, got into retail starting in 2004, and it continued to grow from 2004, then you started to see the market normalize. And the growth was happening so rapidly that we couldn't fill both the mid-market and the top market at the same time. We were growing 50, 60 percent year over year, it was just with the products that we had. So we were watching the market normalize, we were watching the competitors come in, we left a gap for them to come into. I knew this but I couldn't do anything about it because I couldn't do the high end and the middle at the same time. And when you're transforming a, a manufacturing organization, you know, when you're, in, when you're in, in technology, maybe it's fast, it's easy to grow 100 or 200% of the time. But I was, I was bringing up a whole a supply chain and uh, all of the disciplines and, and building the manufacturing, the product and shipping it and going into retail and, and everything that has to do with manufacturing at the same time. So we completely transformed the blender industry. We now have a very normal, blender industry, with Vitamix being in the high-end box, several competitors being in this low end of the mid-box, and then there's still a large chunk of them at the bottom. But yeah, that's, that's how that market worked and how that happened. Any other questions? The family dynamics. Okay, so I'm fourth generation, and that makes us a cousin consortium. <laughs> So I have uh, cousins working with me, 
And uh, we've, we've been a family business, obviously, for four generations. The first generation was just my great-grandfather. The second was my grandfather and his two brothers. And his two brothers decided after time that they wanted to go off and do something else. So it was just my grandfather. That made it relatively simple. And then my grandparents had six kids. And so all six kids were involved in the organization in one way, shape, or form. And family businesses, I think the success rate of getting past uh, third generation to fourth generation is something like 4%. There's not a lot of organizations that can make that transition because you get in oftentimes in the third generation and you have all these different people who want to do different things. So I was younger at the time and I wasn't involved, but I got to watch the fact that there was different members of the third generation that had a different purpose in mind for where the organization was gonna go. You can call it purpose, you can call it vision, either one, but it was different. And it was pulling the company apart. And at one point where it did almost, where they, they couldn't keep the company together because there were so many different opinions about where the company could go. So my brother and I in the fourth generation stepped up and said, whoa, wait a minute, you guys are kind of maybe destroying things here, can you give us a chance? And one of the things that we decided at that time is we're gonna line on the purpose of the organization up front. And we're gonna figure out where we're going and why we're doing it and how we wanna go about doing it. And then we're gonna allow the people in the organization to, to get it done the way they wanna get it done. So as long as we're moving in this direction, then people within Vitamix have a lot of freedoms to figure out how they wanna do it and what they wanna do as long as we're all moving in the right direction. But it was one of those things that really helped uh, bring us back together as a company. So we almost didn't make it to fourth generation, but now we're working on uh, bringing fifth generation up and trying to prepare them as well. We call it the big Vitamix family, and it's our, it's our employees, it's our customers, it's our vendors, it's our suppliers, it's the community, it's everyone that's involved in working together to help us change the way people think about food. That's why, one reason I like your product, I like Vitamix owner through and through. Oh, thank you. Do you have a green smoothies in the morning? Well, I, make, I use it to make um, strawberry sundae syrup. Ooh. So I got out of the recipe. I, I got the cheapest one you can buy. It's a, it's a <laughs> and that's not one. cheap. <laughs> well, it's two-speed two turbo. Mm-hmm. It does, you know, yeah, way. it works. It's great. So we made a commitment. This is something interesting where a lot of companies don't necessarily do. So we made a commitment that any Vitamix that you buy, and we totally recognize that we have people that are, are not in a position to spend a lot of money on a machine, and some people are more in a position to spend a lot of money, right? But regardless of what Vitamix you purchase, the end product that you get out of it can be the same. So you purchase a two-speed turbo blend. It's got a high and a low. For some people, that's all you need. Some people would prefer to have programs. I don't want to have to figure this out. So I just want to turn it to a program and let the program do all the work. Some want more complicated programs. And so and wherever you are in that stretch, we want to make sure that there's a Vitamix available to everybody. We actually have a certified reconditioned unit available as well because we sell them through Costco. And interestingly enough, the Costco customers, they go shopping without their spouse and they come home and there's this spousal we call it spousal regret. The spouse is going, you did what? You spent what? They say, no, no, you don't understand. It's this machine, it does this, I don't care. Take it back. Two thirds of the people that buy a Vitamix at Costco and return it, buy another one within 60 to 90 days. So it's just a stepping stone for them to get to the point where they actually gonna buy a Vitamix, right? So we take all those units that come back to us and we, will, we have a certification process of reconditioning them. And then we make them available to customers at a lower price point for people who can't afford a high price machine, but it's a completely refurbished machine. The only difference is the motors run for a little while, maybe minutes, maybe a month, I don't know, maybe longer. I don't know how long the motors run, but I know that the container's new and the blades have been sterilized and I'm able to sell that unit to people who would love to have a Vitamix machine, but they're really not able to buy a new one. So it gives us an opportunity to manage our channels even more. So we, we take advantage of those returns. I just had somebody tell me the other day that somebody bought a Vitamix at, um, what did they buy? They bought it at Costco and then uh, their wife regretted it, so they sent it back. And then they went and they bought another one at Costco. And then a couple months later, a new model came out. So they took that one back and they bought another one at Costco. <laughs> I'm like, so this person's get returned three units at Costco's already. <laughs> and then bought, finally, they said, now I bought one and I'm keeping it and they're using it. So we use that as a channel to our advantage.
That's actually a great question because the market is contracting. So we, we monitor the size of the butter market all the time and how it's shifting and how it's changing. And it is slightly contracting at the moment. And <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of that has to do with, we had a really big competitor come out a couple years ago who had commercials out that said just like Vitamix, but a third the price. And that product spent uh, nine times as much on marketing and advertising as we did. So they had really, really deep pockets. They sold a lot of machines, convinced a lot of people that this is as good as it gets. And now people aren't out buying as many blenders anymore. So we've got a big group of people that are stepping their way up to a Vitamix, but they're here for now, right? So we're in a position where it's, where it's contracting. The beautiful thing about it is we're doing two things. Now this is kind of hot off the press, and it's just going to be coming out in the next couple months. But we are, we're bringing a new product out that has um, some innovation and technology to it. So the, the base has a container detect technology. You've heard of smart technology? This is now intelligent technology because the base will know what container you put on it. So if you use our 64 ounce container and you want to make a big smoothie, you put it on the base, it says, oh, you've got the 64 ounce container on. All, I'm going to make all the programs that are associated with this base work with that 64 ounce container. You take that off and you put a 32 ounce container on. It says, oh, it's only half the size. I'm changing all your programs for you. You put a 20 ounce container, well, I'm going to make them even smaller. You put our new 8 ounce container that's coming out on there. Now, with an 8 ounce container, you can't run it as long as you would on a regular Vitamix to make hot soup, right? Because it's just this little container. It changes all of the programs. It says, I'm only going to run as long as I'm allowed to run with a little 8 ounce container on me. So we're taking the high end and we're going to bring in all this new technology without increasing the price point. But what we did is we increased the value. So we're not, in, we're not raising the, the price of this high-end part of the market, but we're going to increase the value that you can get. And then we're also, later this year, going to be coming out with another product that puts us more comfortably in that middle category. But it's not going to have the, all the technology in it, but it's going to have the Vitamix capabilities. So we're, we're doing both. Because we won't compromise how the Vitamix perform, we will never be in the low-end part. Because in order to do that, you simply can't get the performance, you can't get the durability, reliability, and it, that you can get in a Vitamix. But we will be in those, those top two. These are great questions. Well, some of that has to do with where you're at in the generations, I think, because oftentimes the entrepreneur, it's their baby. They've created everything on their own, so therefore they must be the way it must be done, right? Um, but by the time you get into the, the generations below that, for instance, in my case, I'm fourth generation, I've had three generations that have created the foundation that I stand on, so I didn't create the foundation. Um, and I also saw what happens when you've got people who want to do it their way, and that's what, that's what caused some challenges with us in the third generation. So I saw that happening. So I was able to go in with my eyes wide open and say, you know what, it, it, can't, be, it can't be about me and how it gets done, and it can't be about me and what gets done, but I'm in a position where I can help people understand why we're doing it. And if we can align on the why, then I can give people freedoms to, to do what they need to get in order to get the job done. I also did something else, and it's uh, called working on, um, working on assumptions. So if we can align on the assumptions around a decision, like the, the decision-making model, you, you might have come across at RACI, um, R -A, it's either R-A-C-I or R-A-S-I. Somebody's responsible for getting the job done. Somebody has the authority to say yes or no at the end of the day. You've got your S's, which are your supporters, your stakeholders, or if it's a C, those are your consultants, however you want to use that group. But they're all people that have, uh, they have skin in the game, right? And they have all these people that simply need to be informed that you've made a decision. So we use the RACI model within Vitamix, and this A, the person who has the authority to say yes or no at the end of the day, if you're the R, go to the A, find out what does success look like, what must be true, and then the R can go out and actually do and, and complete the project the way they want it done when they take the, the stakeholders' voices in it. Does that make sense? So now the A, if you come back to me and I'm the A, and I've already told you in advance this is what must be true, and what you come back with 
actually delivers on all of my what must be trues? I can't tell you no, because I already agreed with you in the front end that this is what must be true. So okay, make it happen. So education within our family for multiple generations has always been really important. So we've got an educational reimbursement program so that anyone in the organization can go back to school. And so we have quite a few people that are going back to school while they're working. And that reimbursement can be whether you want it to be for an undergraduate, master's, MBA, whatever type of program you want, as long as it's relevant to something that we're doing within the organization, which is pretty broad. So, but as far as advice to anyone who's about ready to graduate, I'd say figure out, take the time to figure out what difference you want to make in the world in your lifetime. Now, I had the absolute pleasure of almost losing my life. And I say that's a pleasure because it completely transformed my way of looking at life. So when you've got a doctor telling you, at this point, we're really hoping we can get you back out of the hospital at some point. Actually, he was telling my mom because he didn't think I could hear what he was saying. Um, we're just hoping that we can get her out. There's nothing like that wake up call to say, whoa, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. I haven't even really gotten started. I got so much I want to do in my lifetime, right? I'm not going to will or wish that experience on anyone. But if there's a way that you can get to a point where you know what difference you want to make in your lifetime, I mean, each and every one of you is so unique. You, your, between your educational experience, your family experience, your work experience, who you are, everything that you've been through makes you completely and totally unique. And if you, your opinions and your thoughts and the way you look at life will not be the same as anyone else's, embrace that. Embrace that and figure out, because of who you are, what difference do you want to make in people's lifetimes? So my, my personal purpose is to give people wings and help them fly. That means everything I do, how I run the company, who I choose to come out and speak with, uh, what organizations I choose to belong with, how I raise my two daughters, how I have the relationship with my husband. Every, it's the lens that I put on with everything I do. And I think, how do I take this moment and how do I help the person that I'm with discover the wings that they have, and how do I help them fly? That's my purpose in life. It's not yours, right? Yours will be different. Some people have a purpose to, because I ask this of, of people within Vitamix, what's your purpose? I've got, I've got one gentleman who's our COO, and he says, I would love in my lifetime to create an iconic brand. Perfect. He wants to create an iconic brand. I want an iconic brand created. <laughs> a match made in heaven, right? Let him live his purpose. I have my cousin who's my chief financial and administrative officer, and one of the things she wants to do in her lifetime is help this organization transition into the fifth generation. Guess what? I don't have to worry about it. She's going to put more energy and more focus on making that happen than I will ever be able to do because that's something that matters to her, right? I have a gentleman who's our director of communications. He, he's such a history buff. He loves history. I said, Scott, what is your purpose in life? And we finally got to a point where we articulated it. He says, I want to bring history to life in a way that it will allow the future to happen better. So when he's, when he's writing and thinking about us from a PR perspective, He's, he's reaching into our history and he's saying, okay, what is it about the Vitamix history that will help us as an organization be more successful going forward? I, I get the opportunity to let him live his purpose in his job, right? So take the time. What is it that you get really excited about? What is it that when you talk about it, your eyes light up and you just, you can't get out of the conversation? Also pay attention to the things when that conversation comes up, you are like running in the opposite direction. Guess what? That's not your purpose, right? But it's the things you get excited about. What is it? I had a friend who had recently left the banking industry. And she, she's like, what do I do? All I know is banking. I said, are you really, really excited about banking? She goes, I don't know, but that's all I know. So we talked about her purpose, and she couldn't figure out what it was. A couple days later, I'm at a, a, an event with her. And she says to somebody, she goes, you know what? When I was a kid, she goes, ah, I've always wanted to be a vet. I love animals. And then she goes, that's it. That's my purpose. I love animals. 
Well, now she's still in banking. She wasn't quite sure how to transition into the animals, but <laughs> she now knows what it is, and she can start to look at life through that lens and say, okay, so why am I in banking? Because it gives her a chance to maybe give back, be involved with animals, whatever it was. But, but take the time to figure out what that purpose is. It will transform your life, and you will definitely feel like you have led a life worth living. So thank you.